Now, sir, uh, Mr. Boyko, share with us your thoughts. It'd be my pleasure. My name is Ian Boyko. I'm the Campaigns and Government Relations Coordinator for the Canadian Federation of Students. And our federation, just by way of background, unites about um, more than 80 student unions from coast to coast. Uh, and, you know, in addition to our, kind of our current members who will one day be graduates and repaying their loans, um, we also, just by virtue of our profile, take dozens of calls a month from st from student debtors who really don't have anywhere to turn, who have no idea what they should be doing um, in terms of uh, bringing their loan back into good standing. And so we, we de facto are uh, sort of a very often a call center for, the, for, for those who are experiencing extreme difficulty in, in repaying their loans. The, the bankruptcy prohibition, or as I've heard some call it the Big Bank Appeasement Act of 1998, um, came during a time in the 1990s when tuition fees were increasing in most provinces at, 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 at a double-digit percentage increase uh, in the 1990s, and mostly as a result of, of, the, of the federal funding cuts to the Canada Health and Social Transfer in the 1990s. So student debt has more than doubled in real dollars since 1990, and there is little reason to suspect that that will plateau anytime soon. So student debt is still on the increase. But further to, further to that, the staggering interest rates that the Government of Canada charges on student loans actually exacerbate skyrocketing student debt. For example, a $25,000 student loan upon graduation over, over the amortization period of 10 years will lead to interest payments of approximately $12,000 by the, by the time that loan is paid back. And so that's about 49% of the value of the original loan after graduation. If somebody is struggling with that loan and negotiates an extension to their amortization period to 15 years uh, of repayment, that will result in, at current interest rates, a, a just interest rate payments of about $19,000 or about 77% of the value of the initial loan. Leading up to the 1998 amendments to the law, only 2% of all of the value of consumer bankruptcies were attributed to student loans. Uh, furthermore, student loan repayment rates are vastly superior to those given out uh, to corporations on behalf of the federal government, something like 93% on student loans versus a repayment rate of, I think, about 15% on, on corporate loans. So there, there's a clear, I think, alternative for the, for the federal government, and that, is, and that is our recommendation, which is to lift any ban on student loan bankruptcy. Um, senators, like I said, should recall that we went 33 years in the Canada Student Loans Program without a bank, without a student loan bankruptcy prohibition. We went from 1964 to 1997 without a student loan bankruptcy, and there's nothing definitive. There's nothing tangibly different about today's students, other than that, through as a result of federal and provincial decision making, are carrying substantially more loans today than their predecessors. And what that comes down to, I think, is that the federal government must take responsibility that it has created thousands more honest and unfortunate debtors. It has created these debtors. Um, federal divestment from post-secondary education has made the current generation the most indebted young people in our Canadians in, in our country's history. But as a compromise to the current legislation, we also support uh, Senator Goldstein's private member's bill, which, will, which would reduce the prohibition to two years with a hardship hearing uh, available at any time before then. Mr. Boyko, thank you very much, not only for appearing here today, but for your letter uh, in both official languages dated November 29th, which will form part of our record. And uh, you've made your case very clearly, and we appreciate your coming.